Halifax C-Suite Conversation Show. Our guest for today is Lindsey Brown. He's the Vice President and General Manager of GoTo Asia Pacific. GoTo helps businesses connect to what is most essential to them, their customers and employees. Now, it's an all-in-one solution for business communications, IT support, and makes IT easy and affordable for small and medium businesses. Now, to tell us more about GoTo, welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Lindsay, for a start, could you give us an overview of GoTo and its history? Sure, sure. So GoTo, formerly known as a company by the name of Log Me In. So GoTo as a company, and even myself, I've been with the company for about 10 years now, but Log Me In's got a heritage of over 25 years. And so as a company, our roots were born in the area of what we call IT management and support or remote support but to let me humanize that a little bit so we were founded by a chap who was in Budapest so you know you've got Buda and Pest which are the two cities and they're separated by the river of Danube and Martone who was the founder at the time he always had to commute across the bridge to go to work so he started in Buda and then he needed to finish in Pest and the Danube river bridge is probably one of the most busiest when it comes to peak hour and so being the entrepreneur that he was 25 years ago he didn't want to get up that early but he wanted to make sure that he could get his work done so he went ahead and he was the pioneer and and invented basically remote access and remote support so he didn't have to worry about battling traffic anymore he could get up get out of bed and just remote into his computer which was across in Pest and he didn't have to worry about the traffic anymore so he'd go in remote into his computer and get work done that's how log me in was born and then 25 years later as you mentioned brian go to is the rebranding and, and many of your listeners are probably quite familiar with our brands we've got go to meeting go to webinar go to connect go to resolve they're household brands these days very much like kleenex but we're very much all around how we power flex working which i'm sure we'll talk a lot about today because it's quite topical and very specifically how we can enable companies of all sizes but especially small businesses and medium-sized businesses better communicate across their employee base and also with their customers through their preferences so whether that might be email phone web socials whatever that might be but then also making sure that employees are supported and so they can do the work they need to do given this higher environment but then also customers are supported as well and they can get in and do what they need to do with a company or a brand whether that's buy something or get support as well now lindsay for, uh, could you give us an insight into uh, your footprint in the asia pacific region and what your go-to-market strategy is Sure. So globally, we're a over a billion dollar company. So we're quite big. We've got over 4,000 employees globally, but we're very much a remote centric organization these days. So we have some office space, but not terribly much within the region here. I look after the Asia Pacific region, which includes Australia, South Pacific, all of Southeast Asia, including India as well. And Japan is also part of my remit. And so we've got thousands of customers, obviously, which we've accrued over many, many years in those areas of business communications, IT management and support. Our go-to-market strategy very slightly by region, but all in all, what we try to do is make sure that we're really close to our customers in the way that we go to market. And so we're very much a channel or partner partner leveraged organization and so we work very closely with our partners whether they be managed service providers your traditional value-added resellers or suppliers or even we work with some of the largest global system integrators um, that are headquartered out of India as well so we work across a range of partners because we think when it comes to serving our customers that's the way in which we can get closest to them really understand their needs and how we can best serve them. So, Lindsay, then in the Asia Pacific region, which are the industries and verticals that uh, you're very strong in? So there's a number of verticals which we're very strong in, and then there's also segments I'd say that we're strong in as well. So when you look at GoTo in particular, um, you mentioned from the outset that we're the all-in-one solution for business communications, IT management and support. And really what that is, is how do you allow 
employees and customers to be able to collaborate within, within a hybrid environment? And then also, how do you make sure that you allow for business continuity for employees and then also allow customers to be able to effectively engage with a company's brand? Now, I say that particularly because when you look at business overall, enterprises are really well served in that area. All right. And you can see probably from my background there that we're the all in one solution for making IT easy. And for big companies, IT is, is it's, it's so easy. And the reason I say that is that big companies, even like GoTo, if you've got a few thousand employees, you've probably got your own IT department. And so you've probably got hundreds of IT professionals there, which are really helping day in, day out, making sure that employees and customers are connected. So you're driving that human connectivity, which is super important in this hybrid world. Then also making sure that the brand is alive, it's operating well, you've got a fantastic marketing presence. People can buy, they can go ahead and engage with you nice and easily. That's 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 the essence of what IT does, right? And it, it enables business. And I know that's been elevated over the past few years. But for small to medium-sized businesses, IT isn't easy, right? And the reason for that is that when you think about that, a lot of your listeners, like I'm sure, can empathize is that they're in the business of doing business, all right? They're not necessarily thinking about IT day in and day out. And in many respects, IT can be quite overwhelming. Um, many companies of a smaller size don't have access to an IT department. And so thinking about how you might then modernize your communications, or then otherwise modernize how you might operate within these hybrid contexts can be really daunting and really difficult to think about what you might do. And that's a big reason why we go ahead and we partner with our channel partners to help for that. But then also, if you look at us as a company, we very much have a heritage of serving large enterprises. Okay, so I mentioned that, you know, we work with some of the largest global system integrators. So think of like Tata, TCS, HCL, Cognizant. Um, some of those large players um, serve these enterprise customers really well. And we serve them really well. These customers for us, they're huge, hundreds of thousands of employees globally, and they trust go to from both a product perspective and a security perspective to be able to get the job done to remotely support their employees within the hybrid context. And the reason I talk about this and belabor on this point is that what GoTo has done from a strategic perspective is that we know and we still have been winning for many, many years within the enterprise space. But what we've noticed, because IT isn't easy, for the small to medium business Absolutely. is that they don't have access to these tools. And so what we've done and our strategies has been is to consolidate our business communication tools, consolidate our IT management and support tools into an all-in-one solution that's at a small business affordable rate, that's at enterprise grade. So we truly believe the SMB is underserved. And so we want to bring that and bring those capabilities to the SMB at an affordable rate where they don't have to think about IT and IT just becomes easy because they've got that access to that all-in-one solution for powering remote work and for powering those online engagements for customers. Now, Lindsay, this is something that really resonates with me in particular because of all the people that I speak to every day, the small medium business across the Asia Pacific region is really, uh, in fact, until the pandemic, an absolute laggard in terms of technology adoption. And then many were forced to adopt technology, but the, really this it's a journey and they're still in that process of uh, adopting technology. So obviously tools that help them to be more efficient at an affordable price is something that they really need. It's huge, right? And uh, you think about the context of the pandemic, which you mentioned, and I think something that was beneficial for many organisations, whether they, they were big or, or small or what have you, is that they were forced. They were forced to think about how they're going to suddenly allow employees to work from home because across all of Asia Pacific and globally, companies had to rethink overnight, how do I keep the lights on? How do I make sure that my business is operating? How do I make sure that I continue to serve both my employees and my customers? Because otherwise, we're going to go out of business. Exactly. And so it was just, it was necessity, right, Brian? And, and so companies really had to think super quick. 
And so there was a couple of great things that came out of that. And there was a few not so great things that came out of that. And so we did a bit of research, of course, as a lot of companies do. And we, we found a few things. But one was that as, as companies and especially small business went into the pandemic, they had to rush. They had to rush to you know, buy virtual tools like we're using now to communicate mm -hmm. and collaborate, which was pretty obvious. And so they went to, to figure out how they were going to make sure that people could collaborate in the first instance. We saw we saw this sort of happen in a few waves. And then, you know, also employees were adopting pretty quick as well. And some were bringing their own devices, of course, because now they were working from home and there was a distance from their IT organisation. So they were bringing their own collaboration tools in. And then also there was this idea of making sure that employees were also supported in the work that we're doing, all right? If they're working from home, you can't suddenly just get the IT professional or your IT provider to come out and knock on the door and make sure everything's okay. And so, you know, the idea of collaboration quickly evolved into making sure that employees were also supported in their journey. And so if they were sitting down in front of the TV, of course, I wasn't doing that. I was working hard in front of my computer. But for those that were sitting down in front of the TV and doing their email, if something went wrong, you needed the IT professional to be able to come in and help out, right? And so the approach that GoTo took was making sure that you could have very much a consumer-like experience because if anything, the pandemic brought everyone online a whole lot more quicker. And so, you know, online means instant. Everyone's used to using like their socials, Facebook, Instagram, email, whatever it is, their chat, their messaging. And so what we did is we made sure that we provide that consumer-like, instant-like experience to make sure that employees are supported in the work that they're doing. So, you know, we leverage tools which are quite household in terms of, you know, their small business and enterprise tools. So Microsoft Teams for communication, uh, Slack for communication, Salesforce is a back end as well. We don't try and replace those products. We integrate with them nicely and allow... Uh, someone, for instance, to be able to slack their IT professional and say, hey, I've got a problem with my mobile. Can you remote in and help me out? All right. And so that was from an employee perspective, but there were tons of things that happened beyond that from a customer perspective as well. But, you know, there's more to it now because that rush on tools meant that a lot was acquired by a small business. All right. And so a lot of money was spent. And so the IT job we found from our, um, from our research has become a whole lot more complex. You've got 50 employees, it's 50 small offices now that the IT professional has to go ahead and support, right? And so it's much, much more complex in the job that they have to do. And so now what's happened is that companies have acquired a big stack, they've got a very complex environment, and now we've got this idea of these economic headwinds, high, re high recessionary pressure, higher prices, higher inflation. There's a shortage we know on talent as well. And, you know, most likely the next year or so is going to be quite tough on small and, biz small and big business alike. And so companies really start need to thinking about how they invest smartly in IT and rationalise what they've got based on those initial investments, which help them leap into the world of IT and digitise their organisations from the now, I want to zoom in on that because GoTo sure. recently released some findings from its how global businesses prepare for an economic downturn. Now, this is a survey detailing thoughts from various businesses globally. Could you give us some key insights and takeaways from that study? Yeah, sure. So I, I think most obviously is that leaders and a lot of your listeners would agree. There was about 80 or so percent of the leaders globally that said, yes, it's very likely that we're going to move into a recession over the next few months, if not already. All right. And, you know, whether you call it a, a recession or not, the facts are very much that inflation has risen. All right. I don't know of any other any country that hasn't had an increase in interest rates. And so prices are a lot higher. Um, the war on talent is there as well. And I say that because um, even leading into this economic headwind, the research, whether it's through what we've seen in Southeast Asia, there was some research that was done by Ernest and Young. They said nine out of 10 employees are going to stick with their employer if they've got flex working, hybrid working arrangements. Otherwise, they're going to look for something else. That's quite a big stat, right? Nine out of 10 want yes. that flex working arrangement. All right, and then we did some follow-up research through Forrester Research, and they were saying sort of seven out of 10. Whichever way you look at it, employees are demanding that flexibility of work now. It's ingrained 
in how we work, right? We want to spend a bit of time at the office, spend a bit of time out in the field, spend a bit of time at home in, in how we work. And so um, what we found then through this one poll survey is that many company leaders now are then thinking, well, you know, I've survived the pandemic, which is great because I think that was a unique circumstance. But many of them are quite confident. I think over 70% that said that they're quite confident of being able to survive a recession because a recession isn't something that's new. A lot of companies have been through recessions in the past and experienced economic downturn. So I think the benefit is for those small businesses that have survived and thrived in the pandemic, they can now use those competencies, those extra areas of resilience, which they've built up over the term, and then think about how can they now prepare for this economic outlook. And so what we found through the research is that um, many want to really have a good, strong focus on their employees. All right. And I, I say that because I'm sure many of the decision makers in companies that are listening to this can um, really understand the fact that making sure that your employees, especially as a small business, are there happy and hardworking within the context of an economic downturn, uh, downturn is, is really important, right? Because you want your employees engaged. And so 80% said a big, big proponent of making sure that we can really thrive over the next 12 months because small business, medium-sized businesses, they want to compete. They do that through their employees. And so they want to focus on employee morale. And so about 80 or so percent said employee morale is super important because that's the key to retention. And then what they went on to say is we need to make sure that then our employees are having the right access to the tools they need to be successful and productive. And about over 50% said that that was through using IT as an enabler to do that, which to me makes a lot of sense, irrespective of my background being IT, because if you think about it, what, what is, what's the most frustrating thing that can be for an employee is if they're working between home or the office or they're working out in the field, if they don't have the right access to tools to do their job, they're not going to be satisfied in the work that they're doing. They're not going to be able to go ahead and make sure that they can support customers or otherwise sell to customers and so employee satisfaction and you see this you know it companies do this plenty of other big companies small companies alike do this in terms of their polling of employees you know how satisfied are they and a big thing that comes back all the time is what is their level of relationship with peers and customers and what is the backdrop behind that is the tools that allow them to do that and collaborate that. And that's what's super important when it comes to hybrid. So organisations want to invest and they see that investing in IT is super important over the next sort of 18 to 24 months. Now, one of the, uh, and I must, I, I found this quite fascinating when reading mm. your survey, there was a dichotomy in terms of how confident businesses were in different countries. Now in the US, 73% of businesses were confident they'd weather the storm. But in India, there was 97% that thought they would weather the storm. 90% said so in the Philippines, 80% from Malaysia and 76% from, from Singapore. Is that the, and, and that seems to be a general consensus that Asia will weather the storm a lot better. What are your thoughts on this? Look, I, I tend to agree. I think for Asia, there's there's so much in terms of, you know, the macros, which allow us to be quite confident in how especially businesses can thrive over the medium term. Because if you look at the growth of our GDP as compared to our larger counterparts in the US and so on, right, our growth rates are just moving beyond what we're seeing in terms of a slowing economy. Um, also, if you look at the demographics as well, there's a lot of research out there that sort of says, like you look at the likes of Indonesia or Australia or some of the other tier one countries within Southeast Asia, is that the demographic, especially millennials, are wanting to go ahead and invest time in their companies. They're also wanting to do things like, you know, side hustles and startups. And so there's a lot there in terms of these burgeoning economies, which offers, um, I think, a lot of confidence to small and big business alike to want to invest in Asia as a region because of these areas of um, businesses 
just growing and starting up and thriving, where it's a little bit different. There's a lot of geopolitical tension in other areas of the world. Within EMEA, for instance, there's an energy crisis. There's a lot of political turmoil in the US and so on. And, you know, there's a lot of things I think the Fed need to get right in terms of how they're managing monetary policy. So I think Asia over the next few years is really going to thrive. And I think that's reflected in the stats and the results. Um, and so, you know, from a technology perspective, I think what companies need to do now as they emerge from the pandemic is really think about how are they going to invest their money smartly so they can innovate. And we've got some great examples in region from customers that have helped for this. So to give you one quick example, for instance, um, there's uh, a luxury car manufacturer that services the region out of Europe. Um, and you think about it, right? If you're gonna go get your, um, your fantastic car serviced, you wanna make sure that you put it in and you get it back on the same day. All right, because that's that's what you call great customer service. Yeah. And so if there's a particular issue with your car, you don't have to wait two, three days to find out what that is. And so some great innovative use we're seeing, because when you think about it, when it comes to IT, a lot of business decision makers sort of think, well, IT is a cost center. That's something I have to pay. But innovation is a means by which you can turn IT into a profit center. And so what this luxury car manufacturer is doing is they bring in the expert remotely from Europe. All right, and so they use GoTo as a tool to be able to remotely collaborate through something like a tablet device or a phone to be able to use the capabilities of that. So the video, the camera and so on and use that as an experience by which the mechanic can go ahead and provide a view by holding the tablet, you know, under the car, over the car, under the hood, wherever it might be, bring in that remote expert and then point out and annotate on the screen what the issues might be. Um, so then the, the remote expert can provide some advice. In fact, because the go-to products and remote support have diagnostic capabilities, they can also attach to the luxury car computer and run diagnostics to understand in the background what's going on. And so again, what is the end game of this? It's getting the car back on the street for the customer and making sure that they get that timely timeliness in terms of their customer service. But that to me is innovation at its core. It's taking our products and thinking beyond the traditional use case of how do you do remote support or whatever it might be, which you know probably is something people don't think terribly much about, but this is innovation and making sure that a company can turn that into a profit and, and truly get some benefit from some technology. No, and, and that's an interesting thing, uh, Lindsay, very interesting use case, because we will see that more and more as we have more uh, electric vehicles on the road and autonomous vehicles thereafter, we're going to be seeing more than remote, uh, remote uh, support for, for, for Singapore or Malaysia could come out of Czechoslovakia, doesn't matter wherever it is, right? Yeah. You just plug it into the OD, OBD, as you said, your tablet reads from the OD, OBD, the readings come out and you can read it straight away and you're right. wherever you are, the Czech Republic. Yeah. It's been a fascinating conversation, Lindsay, but uh, before we leave, what are your final thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with? Well, I think there's a few things that we need to think about, right? When it comes down to, now I think, as a small business, even as a large business, you don't want to just think about survival when it comes to the next year or so. I think you really want to think about how can you innovate as a company, um, much like the customer case study there that I shared with you. So, you know, how can you grow? Coming out of the pandemic is a great opportunity for any business to evaluate its tech stack. Because as I said, there was a lot of overinvestment there. And so a lot of tools were acquired. And so there's an opportunity now to consolidate. And for small business, if they want to get access to modernizing their tech stack, so making sure that they can have modern business communications and not invest in four or five different areas. So don't worry about investing in the traditional telephone, then an email, and then you know how you might engage through your socials and so on. Think about how you might unify that brand experience through an all-in-one tool. So then customers can engage through their preference to your brand that's personal to them. And then similar from a support perspective, making sure that you can support your employees irrespective of where they're located, whether they're at home, whether they're at the office or whether they're out in the field, making sure that they're operational, keeps them satisfied and make sure that they stay with your company. And that can translate to the consumer experience as well, right? Imagine Brian, if you've got a customer 
that's on your website and is just about to buy and they've got a question, what would be the preference? Would it be for someone like an agent to remote in on that point and say, hey, I can see you're just about to buy and they're live. How can I help you make that decision? All right. Rather than go ahead and go in the endless circle of the chatbot or the virtual assistant, which everyone thinks is a great thing, but sometimes just someone live is, is the way to go. All right. So when you're thinking about how you might thrive, how you might innovate over the next few years, then I think consolidation of your IT tools and thinking about having that all-in-one solution, especially for small business and making IT easy is the, is the final thoughts I'd like to leave with your listeners. Lindsay, thank you very much for taking your time to come on the show. Thank you, Brian. It's been a pleasure. We've been speaking to Lindsay Brown, the Vice President and General Manager of GoTo Asia Pacific. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to BizTech's C-Suite Conversation Show. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our social media platforms. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in.